We are now finished with our compositing only projects, with our raster only projects. And we're going to start learning the, the next type of digital imaging, which is vector design. We go to unit modules and you see on our course outline that we're introducing assignment four. So this is after our GIF animation and after our group presentations, because our group presentations are going to be when we come back from spring break. So you should be checking in with your groups. We'll talk about it more next week. And we're skipping to unit nine to start this process, right? The first part of this process is proving ground number two. That's where you're going to sketch for your logos. And we have to do that before we can know what we want to do with a vector program like Adobe Illustrator. So you can see there's quite a few aspects to this unit, and it's helpful to go through them all. The first is our third question of the day. This is helping you remind you and helping you understand the difference between vectors and raster imaging when you might use one versus the other. There's a nice student made video here. There are some examples here. We'll talk about them next class, but it's, it's good to look at them early to remind yourself. We want our logos to be really nice and clean. A good logo is these three things, clear, engaging, and versatile. It's different than other types of art, right? Because it has to be so versatile in how big it is and what kind of colors it is on what kind of materials it's made of, right? And then there's three approaches to logo design. Central symmetrical, though not always perfect, perfectly symmetrical. It goes from the center out, right? It's balanced from the center. Dynamic, which means the eye moves across it at speed. It uses curves. It uses diagonals. It avoids horizontals and verticals. And then a play with positive and negative space, where the empty space, like the S here in USA, is actually activated for the logo itself. Or in the key here that has a skyline. What you're going to do for your first proving ground is whatever your logo idea is, you're going to have to sketch it in all three approaches to be black shaped logos. So you're just going to, like you're cutting it out of black paper. So if I'm doing a design of Nico the Nighthawk, which is kind of my default, right? This would be a central symmetrical design. This would be a dynamic design. You know, it's made the eyes made to go through it with curves and diagonals. And then this would be a play of positive and negative space where you have the black being the, the silhouette of a nighthawk's head and then the white inside not only kind of being the eye of the nighthawk but also being this knight figure, right, playing on that pun. And then after proving ground two, you put your sketches up that have done all three things. You have to label them. You're going to comment on someone else's sketches and tell them which of their three you prefer, right? Once you've chosen one, like my dynamic approach, then we'll learn how to clean that up in order to turn it into a clean vector. Right? So there's a lot of steps. It all starts with the question of the day and the slides that are linked in that question of the day. Then you can see past student examples. This is what will be due for the actual assignment, a refined sketch, which will come from your proving ground a black shape vector, and then a colored version of that vector. On and on and on. All right, so for your proving ground, this is for exercising convergent and divergent thinking. It's thumbnail sketching and giving a process critique to another student, right? Getting outside input. So. What do you want to do for your logos this semester? I had a few ideas, and I put them on the actual assignment page. My idea was that we could all do something that was like a spirit animal inspired logo. Now that's a suggested theme. If you want to do a particular logo, because you have a particular reason to it for, for branding, for uh, a business, whatever it might be, you're free to do that. But it needs to be a clean black shape logo because we're going to turn that into a color variation. So I'm going to do a spirit animal idea. 
my spirit animal. This is kind of Nico the Nighthawk. <laughs> I'm inspired. I'm finding inspiration. I'm finding it from like Mayan and Aztec uh, glyphs of, of kind of their spirit creatures. And so I need to start sketching. Now, of those three approaches, is this central symmetrical? Is this dynamic or is this a play of positive and negative space? So let me put those side by side here in the slides. Which one would you say this design, this is just an inspiration one, is most similar to? So I see positive and negative space. And kind of, sort of, right? Like it's definitely punching out, but I don't know that just the white shapes on their own communicate anything on their own. It starts to look like letter forms, but that's actually a little bit distracting. But it's also kind of central symmetrical, right? It's balanced off the middle, even though the head's at the side. Because remember, for central symmetrical, it starts in the middle and is balanced out from there. So it's a lot like the MBC peacock with the, the beak on one side. That doesn't mean it's dynamic, right? So this is a balanced symmetrical one. So that might be one approach. So I'll show you at the beginning of next class, because we're out of time, how I would sketch for these in all three approaches. Or I'm just going to sketch this idea out on scratch paper, right? Thinking of just black shapes. And it's always good to find inspiration for yourself. Some logos are organic looking like this. Some are super clean and minimal. Others can be really complicated. So you decide what approach you want. And if you want the default theme of a spirit animal, think of it as you want a cheap one color tattoo on your body of an animal. Make the cleanest design of it you can, right? So sketch out that tattoo. Come to class with that and we'll be good to do proving ground number two. All right.